What's going on, Southwest Florida? Today, I want to talk about massage and how it works. I'm going to go into pain and the nervous system and stress and all those things. So first, uh, when I say massage, you know, I, I just want to keep the, the title really short for the podcast, but I mean anything that's sort of a passive modality. So that could be hands-on massage, deep tissue work, ART, rolfing, scraping, you know, gua sha, graston, sort of all the same thing. Cupping, hypervolt, uh, even ice, you could consider one of these. Um, anything that you're going to try to apply to your body to make yourself feel better. That's what I mean. So I'm going to talk about sort of three mechanisms of how it may work, right? Because no one fully understands this stuff. And there's been a lot of paradigm shifts. So I'm going to kind of update you on three of the current uh, sort of trends in the way we think about how this stuff all works. So, but first, let me tell you what it's not doing. So the old antiquated idea that we're breaking up scar tissue or breaking up adhesions, that's been shown to be false. That's not what's happening. You can't scrape, you know, if you had a knee replacement and you got some deep scar tissue, doesn't matter how much you scrape it, you're not going to affect it. A superficial scar right in the skin, I don't know, maybe there's an argument there that you have some sort of effect on it. But like deep down scar tissue adhesions, you basically need scalpels to kind of, you know, cut that up. You can ask a surgeon, he'll say, yeah, you need a saw to cut through that. So that's what's not doing. And unfortunately, that narrative is still out there a lot and it's just not right. So we'll start off with sort of the mechanical aspect of what might be happening. So, I mean, you know, on the musculoskeletal level, what do we think might be happening? Uh, one thing that's definitely happening is there's a change in the fluid dynamics. So, um, you know, you get an area of tissue that kind of feels dense. There may be some sort of backup, maybe in the lymphatic system. Uh, for more on that, check out the podcast with Dr. Perry Nicholson. We go deep into what the lymphatic system is, but you sort of get like uh, a stagnant stagnation of fluids. So maybe we're having an effect on the lymphatic system. We're definitely getting the area red, which means there's blood flow to the area. And that's definitely going to be a good thing. You want perfusion in an area that's not feeling good. All right, so that's probably the best thing we're doing on the musculoskeletal levels. Maybe affecting fluid, you know, uh, desensitization too, which I'm, I'm just going to go into some of the other parts of what I'm talking about. Uh, so next up is the sort of pain science approach to what's happening. So this first has to be um, described in like what is pain really? So pain in the way the pain scientists think about this, and by the way, there's a great TED talk on this by a physio out of Australia. His name is Lorimer Mosley. It's about a 15 minute talk. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Uh, he's hilarious and he's brilliant. And he does a really good job of giving you a summary of what pain science really is and how contextual pain is. But in a nutshell, what happens is pain is like your body's warning system. It's your nervous system, system sensing something. So say, um, you haven't played tennis in five years and then you go out and play a tournament. And then suddenly your elbow hurts. So what's going on there? You just used that tissue probably more, when I say tissue, like the muscles of the elbow, uh, probably more than they've been used in a while and exceeded their capacity. So there's some type, type of change, like a thermal change, a metabolic change, maybe there's waste buildup in the area. And the nervous system notices this. And so it says, wait, no, sir, I do not like this. And it wants to prevent injury. So I always say pain prevents injury in almost all cases. In fact, when you have full tissue damage, a lot of times it's not even pain because it's not even helpful at that point. But once I was in high school playing street hockey and I fell on a piece of glass, split my knee wide open, I could see my fat pad hanging out and I didn't even know what happened. I didn't feel it at all because really it's like pain at that point is not even useful information. Uh, so anyways, so the nervous system sort of um, senses the there's something going on there and it turns up the the amplifier on pain in that area becomes hypervigilance, right? So what we may be doing is flooding that area with like basically non-threatening stimuli. That's kind of the way we say it. So in other words, if we're scraping it, doing some deep, deep tissue massage, we're doing some scraping, I'm sorry, some uh, traction on the area with some cupping, all these things stimulate the nerve endings. And what happens, you don't die, the tissue doesn't break, right? So what it does is has a, a temp temporary like dampening effect on the nervous system and the nervous system says, okay, we can quiet this area down for a bit, at least temporarily. All right, so that's sort of the, the pain science thing. Now, the third part, and to me, kind of the most interesting, is the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So quick overview, sympathetic is your fight or flight. 
parasympathetic is your rest and digest mode. That's we have two sort of modes of our, our nervous system. That's the autonomic nervous system. Uh, so when you're in fight or flight, your body does all these things, all these hormones are secreted, like cortisol, that is the stress response hormone that gets secreted and tells your body to do certain things. It pulls certain levers. So it's like, okay, what do we need right now? We need energy. So it liberates carbs into your bloodstream because that's a fast burning source. It uh, inhibits digestion because you don't really need to digest when you're in a, a bar fight, right? And it does all these things. It increases your, your tone of your muscles. Uh, it, actually, your muscles get stiffer in response. So they're ready to fight. Um, what else does it do? That's kind of a quick overview. Um, and the parasympathetic is just the opposite. So digestion turns on, healing turns on, you know, your muscles relax. The vagus nerve is stimulated and it helps the muscles relax. So th this to me may be, I think, the most profound effect on what uh, a massage may do, especially if it's a nice massage, right? If you get like a Swedish massage, you're able to relax, you're able to fall asleep. That's a good thing. <laughs> you're stimulating that parasympathetic nervous system. That's actually affecting the tone of the muscle. It's quieting down the muscle tone. And that, um, by the way, is uh, kind of a general rule of thumb, I always say to my patients, if I'm massaging you and you are holding your breath, which becomes sympathetic, by the way, holding your breath or chest breathing, these things are all sympathetic. Uh, it's counterproductive. I don't, I don't want to be pressing that hard. So a lot of times I'll see, you know, a patient that maybe has seen a different practitioner and they come in, they're all bruised up. I see huge cut marks all over the back. And I was thinking, uh, you know, I just don't like that. <laughs> you know, and maybe I'm not understanding why someone wants to leave giant bruises all over somebody. I just think it could be counterproductive. Um, it's not releasing toxins or whatever sort of nonsense is being said out there. Um, I think you're just like hurting somebody really. And, and, you know, pretend you're causing tissue damage. If you're causing bruising, you're causing tissue damage. Uh, sometimes I do leave a bruise and it's totally incidental. And I'm like, shoot, I went too hard that time. And maybe I have to go with a lighter approach to my techniques. And that's a good rule of thumb for you as well. If you're, you know, maybe seeing a lacrosse ball leaves a, a big bruise, maybe you had a downgrade to a tennis ball, right? You're not, you know, bruising to me is counterproductive. Uh, so <clears throat> this all kind of ties into something too called the HPA axis. So um, that is the hypothalamus stimulates the pituitary gland, stimulates the adrenal glands, and that's that's what releases cortisol your adrenal glands. Uh, so if you are chronically in this like sympathetic state, which most of us are, by the way, you know, just this Western society is a very sympathetic state of being. Um, it's gonna be very hard for your muscles to calm down. So Google HPA axis dysfunction, check it out. See if you have some of the symptoms. I bet you do. Most people do. If you're, I mean, just a hint, if you're not sleeping well, you probably have HPA axis dysfunction. Uh, and if these things aren't addressed first, it's going to be impossible. All the massage and exercise in the world, it's going to be really hard to get everything in check, uh, which brings into the whole idea of the biopsychosocial model. So when it comes to pain, pain is tricky. There's a lot of variables to it. And, you know, just doing some physical therapy or massage may not be enough depending on your you know, particular scenario, right? So sleep is a massive or lack of sleep, a massive augmenter of pain, lack of hydration, lack of movement, uh, poor uh, nutrition, all these things. So, I mean, we know if you have a diet high in sugar, it's going to flare up your joints. So all these things combine to cause pain. So the point is get everything in check, get your massage, <laughs> Do it so it's comfortable, not so it's super painful, and then see how you feel. So that's all I have for you this week. I'll be talking to you soon.